I've heard many people uh, on the left sort of hyperventilating and and about the consequences of this decision for black Americans and for racism. Uh, I mean, this is, uh, I mean, that's a very uninformed fear to push. I think there's two things to say just right off the bat. One is nine states had already banned affirmative action before this ruling. And I did not recall anyone, you know, when I was applying to college in 2013 saying, hey, Coleman, you know, you're a bright black and Hispanic kid. Just make sure you don't don't apply. Don't bother applying to California or uh, Washington or all of the other these other states, Michigan, because Mm -hmm. it's a hellscape there for black kids. No one said that because no one even had that fear. And now there are people trying to sort of uncover all the ways in which it's been terrible, terrible to be a black Californian student for the past 25 years as a way Mm of sort of justifying that take you have also pointed out in uh, you have a phenomenal article uh that you wrote at your Substack about this that is in our show notes and whatnot but um that we're also talking here about a very elite phenomenon um yeah. could you discuss that a little bit and um you know just what what does that mean in the context of college admissions yeah so i i am a half black half hispanic elite so when I when I make these comments, I come from a place of uh, of knowledge and love, not of denigration. Mm-hmm. But the 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 policy we call affirmative action is not a policy that has anything to do with addressing the problems of what used to be called the black underclass, the problems of black poverty, um, the, the legacy of, of of racism and 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 so forth. It's a policy that affects, according to Princeton sociologist Thomas Espenshade about 1% of black and Hispanic 18 year olds in any given year, the other 99% uh, either don't graduate high school to begin with or graduate high school, but go to colleges with with higher acceptance rates um, that don't practice affirmative action. So this, some people want to frame this as a decision about quote unquote, access to higher education has nothing to do with access to higher education per se, it has to do with the ease of entrance to a very select set of of Ivy League and uh, elite schools in general, Mm -hmm. which have a somewhat inflated sense of self-importance to begin with. For instance, if you look, and again, I speak as someone who went to Columbia. And And Juilliard uh, as well. Yeah, which is a totally different case. But if you look at the the, the colleges attended by the Fortune 500 CEOs in this country, you see very few elite colleges there. By and large, you see schools with like above sixty percent acceptance rates that wouldn't be affected by this ruling, and they also they all somehow got good educations there. So I think we have to keep in proportion what this case is really about. And can we, uh, you know, here is a slide that um, uh, this is uh, Joe Biden speaking, um, uh, saying, you know, affirmative action is so misunderstood. I want to be clear, make sure everybody is clear about what the law has been and what it has not been. Many people wrongly believe that affirmative action allows unqualified students to be admitted ahead of qualified students. This is not how college admissions work. And then um, just this is admit rates at uh, Harvard by race race and ethnicity and academic decile. And uh, what this chart shows essentially is that uh, the acceptance rate for an Asian American in the top uh, academic decile. So these are extremely, you know, high performing students uh, at Harvard had a slightly lower rate than an ac- African American applicant in the fourth academic decile uh, or the sixth in the Hispanic. So it it's not a question of whether or not everybody is qualified or unqualified, but it does seem, you know, clear. And this certainly came out in the case against Harvard that they were D- diminishing the possibility of Asian Americans to get in according to the way that they would if kind of test scores and the g- general profile uh, was there without a racial preference. When you look at something like that, Coleman, you know, what what's your response to that? You just said you're, you know, you're Hispanic and African American. Mm-hmm. Um, you obviously have been, you know, killing it, uh, you know, but like when you look at that, you know, ha- you know, what's your response to that? First of all, people have long defended affirmative action by saying it's really just a thumb on the scale. It's used only as a tiebreaker between otherwise identical candidates. 
you know, I've always known that that's just a lie or just uninformed by the people who mm -hmm. say it. Uh, but it does betray a sense that even defenders the, of the policy are a little bit uncomfortable defending the reality of it. Mm -hmm. They would wish it to be more of a thumb on the scale thing, but it's not. And we've had research that's shown that for, I mean, you know, several decades, actually. Yeah. Thomas Eshmanshade found it was the equivalent of 450 SAT points for an Asian student relative to a black mm -hmm. student, everything else held equal. Um, and and uh, and just uh, one more thing to say about that is is um, actually sorry I just forgot the point I was going to make. Continue. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> well, well, I, yeah, yeah well, I, can, I can jump in. The, the way Biden put it was a bit of a word trick because he yes. made it hinge on uh, something that, to which there is no definition: qualified versus unqualified. You can't go and find data uh, that is assort, uh, assorted by those categories in order to sidestep the question of whether better qualified applicants were being turned away in favor of not as well qualified applicants, which is what we can get statistics on. And those decile numbers uh, were a good example of, of many others. Uh, so Biden makes an assertion that can't be verified uh, about an undefined concept because uh, he'd rather yeah. not talk about all the things that we do know. I think, Walter, well, you took that from my head because that's okay. precisely what I wanted to say. <laughs> so, Colbin, what happened in places like California and Michigan? Was there, you know, was there a substantial and persistent decline in, you know, the number of blacks and Hispanics who were admitted to, you know, the UC system or the Cal State system, things like that? Mm -hmm. And and if so, is that is that a problem? And I just to add, you know, so that I give you more questions than you could possibly remember, much less answer in a single bound. Um, if that is, if, you know, if it does result in lower acceptance rates or lower attendance rates among blacks and Hispanics, is it, you know, it's not, is it college where that kind of thing should be addressed? Uh, you know, that mm. kind of disparity. So what happened in California is that, you know, UC, as, as you know, is not a college, it's a whole set of colleges, right. yeah. uh, as, as is Cal state system, some of those colleges, after affirmative action was banned, black and Hispanic attendance went down. At other of those colleges, it went up so that the overall change in attendance was nothing. Yeah, uh, which and, is kind of great, right? And kind of exactly what you'd expect. Yeah. Um, and and uh, there's a paper called Did the Sky Fall? Uh, the Consequences of Prop 209, mm -hmm. which found that the graduation rate in, among the post affirmative action class was actually somewhat higher. Yeah. presumably because people were better matched their incoming credentials and preparedness were better matched with the schools they were they were attending mm -hmm. um, one of the side effects of affirmative action has been that you are effectively sending that those black and hispanic kids to be at the bottom of those better schools um, which for some of them they i think some of them will rise to the occasion and find out that they really can uh hold a candle to right. either all their prepared peers, but some of them can't. But half of U.S. adults disapprove of selective colleges considering race and ethnicity. Um, a third approve. It changes a little bit. Blacks are more likely to approve, but it's still under half of blacks say that should happen. Interestingly, Demo people who are Democrats identify as Democrats and lean Democrat, 54% of them approve of using race and ethnicity. You know, on a certain level, is this the Supreme Court catching up to where the country seems to be going? Well, yeah, I mean, I think either every or almost almost every time affirmative action has been put to a state referendum, including in states liberal as California, it's lost. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it has long been a fairly unpopular policy. Mm -hmm. Worth noting that before 2020, Pew and Gallup asked these questions in 2019. And back then, even a majority of black adults mm -hmm. said that uh, they disapprove of the use of race in college admissions. Uh, and, and perhaps the uh, kind of culture of the past three years has changed that for, for black Americans. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, people and, and you know, what's really interesting here to me is that back in 2019, when you asked the question, do you support affirmative action? Lots of people would say yes. Majorities mm -hmm. would say yes. But if you ask the same group of people, do you support the use of race in college admissions? They'd say no. So mm -hmm. it's clear the framing of using that euphemism, affirmative action, which if you didn't know what it meant already, no. would never tell you what it meant. 
um, lent the policy kind of an air of, of credibility that the actual substance did not. Have. That was an excerpt from our recent live stream with Walter Olson of the Cato Institute and Coleman Hughes talking about recent court decisions dealing with affirmative action and whether or not website operators had to serve gay couples. If you want to see another excerpt, go here. If you want to see the full thing, and you should, go here.